Yeah, hi there, Felix. This is Michael, and I'm taking a look at the email that you sent me a few days ago. And this one is about reading comprehension. So you say, how do I increase my reading comprehension? To be honest, I don't read English books every day because my time is very limited. I do make writings and speaking almost every day. Last month, my reading speed was 300 words per minute with 80% comprehension. That's pretty good. Say so right now, after trying several reading speed tests, I couldn't catch up the whole information from the reading passage and my speed was down from 250 to 280 again. Is this a downgrade? Maybe. Now what does that tell you about reading? It tells you if you don't practice it, you won't continue to improve. But if you keep practicing, you either maintain or you get better. So they say with language, either you're getting better or you're getting worse, but usually you don't just stay the same. So it's important that uh, this tells you that the speed reading test you should be doing on a regular basis and you should be reading extensively on a regular basis. So to improve your reading comprehension, you already know there's five things you have to do to get better. Number one, you have to read every day for about 45 minutes. You want to do this for several months, even several years. If you read a lot, you continue to get better. You never want to stop. Number two, you have to build your vocabulary. Number three, improve your reading speed. Number four, become familiar with the reading question types and the strategies for answering them. And then taking full length IBT practice tests and particularly focusing on the reading section. If you do those five things, Felix, you will get better. But remember, if you're not reading, you can't expect to stay the same as you were last month. You have to keep doing this language activity over and over and over. So that would be my answer to that question. Let's take, a, let's take a look at your next question. So you say, thanks for replying me that fast. I just downloaded the Barron's TOEFL software for free. I did three mini reading tests. Each test has 13 questions. The first, I got 11 out of 13. The second, I got 10 out of 13. And the last one, I got 7 out of 6, or you got 6 out of 7. You said yesterday... I did some of the mini reading tests too. I got 10 out of 13 two times. My reading score is always between 19 and 22 points. I need to get 25. Do you have any suggestions? You say, I used to read every day, but somehow I can't read every day because of my school. I have a very good novel. It's called Assassin's Creed. It's a very tough one for me to read. I sometimes get confused when reading it. Can you help me? You've already answered your question here. You just need to keep practicing, right? Even though your score right now is not where you want to be, if you keep reading on a regular basis. Now, don't forget, you probably have to build your vocabulary also. So, Felix, you can go to the uh, second, actually the first part of my course, especially focus on vocabulary lesson number four, number five, and number six, right? So as you improve your vocabulary, as you continue to read extensively, and you keep increasing your reading speed, right? And you're already doing the practice test, which is what you should do. But here's the trick. Sometimes students feel like when they're improving their reading, they focus too much on the IBT reading test taking strategies and also the practice test, but they don't focus a lot on just reading extensively, building vocabulary, and increasing reading speed. Don't forget those first three things. Those things are more important than just taking practice tests. So my message for you is to keep practicing. It looks like you have a great book. Read the book. Right? Now if you have if you have some questions about what to do or how to engage actively with the book, go to my reading lesson number one. That'll give you some good tips for how you can read that particular textbook or that book.
And in this email, you have a question about TOEFL listening, and specifically about improving your listening comprehension, right? So you see, I've seen the video link that you've given to me before. I do understand how to use it, but how to abbreviate words to make it simple is difficult. Of course it is. This is why you practice, right? You will develop a system of abbreviation that works for you. And you know what, Felix? Only you need to understand it. You see, for example, when a professor states one supporting detail, the professor tends to say complicated sentences and they speak fast too. It's true. And sometimes it's hard for me to understand their purposes. For example, what does a professor mean when he says this? Now that particular question, this is what's called a question about pragmatics. The good news is, is during the listening aspects of the TOEFL exam, when they do say what does a professor mean when he says this, they actually play part of the conversation again, right? So once you hear it, then you have to think about what does it mean indirectly or implicitly. In this case, you're kind of, uh, you're inferring what you think the professor means by what he says. So to help you here, one of the tips that I give a lot of students is, is to take time practicing your listening on a daily basis, right? I know it's busy, it's hard work doing TOEFL preparation, right? So the main thing is if you take maybe 30 to 40 minutes a day and you listen to TV programs, for example, you may listen to news, documentary, history, maybe even science programs. These are all good. What you do is you focus on getting the main and the most important supporting points of those uh, lectures or those programs. And eventually, as you practice, and you may review from time to time, my listening lesson number one, which shows you how to take notes, and then gradually, you will begin to implement some of these abbreviations and some of these strategies. You will begin using them more and more with your own note taking. The main thing is you practice taking notes daily. Even though in the beginning your notes are skimpy, they may be inaccurate, they may be incomplete. But guess what, Felix? we got to start somewhere, right? So start practicing. And don't forget there's three good websites that you can use to practice your listening. Number one, National Public Radio. Number two, TED Talks. Number three, Randall's Cyber Listening Lab. All right? Yeah, hi Felix. So let's take a look at your email here. You say, I've done several of your listening practice tests. I still didn't catch the best way to take notes. I don't know how to abbreviate my writings to be concise. I've seen many videos and methods to take notes, but I still can't do it properly. Can you help me to understand the lecture and how to take notes? My listening is so bad, I wish my listening were just as good as my writing. Your writing is really good. And you know what? We all have strengths and weaknesses. We're not all equal in all areas. It looks like you're better with your writing. You're doing a pretty good job with your speaking. So in this case, one of the tips I can give you is try to catch in the beginning the main thing is, what is the purpose of the lecture? So if, if a professor starts off and say, today, we'll be discussing the writer, William Faulkner, and some of his accomplishments over the last 40 or 50 years. Once he says that, then you know that all of your notes center around the accomplishments of this particular writer. So in the beginning in your notes, you might put WF, which means William Faulkner. You might put William Faulkner, a accomplishments at the top and then below that maybe in one or two words start trying to get down what some of his accomplishments were based on what you hear in the lecture so your strategy at least is if you can understand the purpose of the lecture that can help you organize your information now sometimes a lecturer may be using what's called compare and contrast type organization. In that case, if it says today we will be comparing typhoons and hurricanes, then it's very simple. Immediately in your notes, you draw a line through the middle of the page 
you'll put uh, typhoons on one side, you'll put hurricanes on the other, and then you will start listing, according to the lecture, the different characteristics of these two types of storms. You see what I'm saying? Or you might have a professor talking about a cause-effect type relationship some causal analysis but my point is is try to listen for the purpose and also the organization of the lecture that may help you in terms of how you organize your notes now for the purposes of integrated speaking into integrated writing I recommend this method for the speaking if you know it's a reading and it's also um, a lecture that might be uh, integrated speaking task number four, right? In this case, draw a line through the middle of the paper. On one side, put R, then put equals. And it might be something like this. Let me show you something just quickly. So you may do something like this. This means R for reading. And then on the, on the other side, you'll put L, which means lecture. Something along those lines. So your purpose here is to explain the topic of the reading here. Then you write down the topic of the lecture. The next idea is try to get down maybe three points in the reading passage that it mentions about the topic. And of course, try to do the same thing for the lecture. Is try to get at least maybe three key points. Now here's the important part. Ask yourself, how are the points in the lecture, these points one, two, and three, you may look at these especially with integrated writing as what's called counterpoints. So how are these points different from the points made in the reading? So sometimes with integrated speaking and integrated writing, you can organize your notes in this way because you're kind of doing a compare and contrast uh, type organization. All right, so hang in there. You got a lot to say. You got a lot of questions, but remember, uh, practice makes perfect. A lot of the tips, strategies that I'm giving you, these things take time. You got to practice them over a period of several months before you really feel you can do these things very, very effectively. Because it's true, like you say, academic English, especially lectures and such, is difficult. It's difficult to keep up with the main points. All right, Felix, let's take a look at your question in this email. And uh, you say, Michael, I do understand the grammar of English pretty well, and I agree with you. I've read your writing. I've listened to many of your uh, independent and integrated TOEFL speaking practice tests. You're doing a good job. You say, so grammar is not really a problem for me. The problem is, how do I speak with a correct grammar. When it comes to the speaking, I always make mistakes with the grammar because I have to speak very fast in order to give my idea for 45 seconds. As a result, I make a lot of grammatical errors because I have to speak whatever comes to my mind. I find it very difficult to speak without making grammatical errors. On the other hand, writing is very different. I can correct and recheck my writings if I make grammatical mistakes. That's why my writings are always above 25. Can you help me with this one? Yes, I can. So, do what you're doing. Keep practicing. Keep posting your speaking practice test because part of what you're trying to do is to get familiar with what kinds of problems you're having with your grammar, with your pronunciation, or with your vocabulary. Now, my recommendation is when you do a practice test, if, if I give you feedback about a grammatical problem, write it down. Put it into your grammar speaking journal. The first step, Felix, is you have to become more familiar with what kinds of grammar errors you're making. Number two, 
then you have to study and learn and reinforce your grammar in those particular areas. How do you do that? You can do that by going to my website and studying in the grammar lessons. So, for example, if you notice that you're having problems using who or which in adjective clauses, then you want to study the, the lessons on adjective clauses in the grammar part of my course. You see what I'm saying? Now, the last thing you can do is, now I don't recommend doing this all the time, but I know that you post a lot of speaking practice tests over at my Voxipop discussion group, maybe one time or two times a week, write down the entire response, make sure it is grammatically correct, it's organized and developed well, practice it several times, and then record it for me. And hopefully all grammar is accurate, you have a complete... Uh, develop presentation of ideas, you have a good coherent organization and your pronunciation is very clear. So what that does is it gives you a chance to really, really think about the grammar you're using when you're speaking. And you might do that once or twice a week. Again, write out your entire speech, go through it grammatically, make sure everything is correct and then post it for me to grade. So that would be a suggestion that I would give to you there. Uh, the next thing you say, listening is a major problem. We have seen that in previous emails. You say it's really hard to understand the lecturer. I'm just weak during the lecturer conversations, but with the other listening parts in the TOEFL, like a conversation between a professor and a student, that's not a problem for me. So you like what's called discussions. When there's a discussion to you, it's easier for you to follow the information because there's an exchange. Right? That makes sense. So in terms of lectures, you, you just keep practicing. You remember in previous emails I told you that uh, understanding the purpose of the lecture is really one of the best ways to help you keep track of the information which is going to happen in that particular lecture. So that's one thing. Obviously keep working on your note-taking skills, your abbreviation skills. I'm telling you, Felix, this is absolutely paramount to getting over 100 on the TOEFL IBT. You have to have very good notes, not just during the listening section, but also during the speaking and the writing sections of the exam. Alright, so you know that in the listening part of my course, I have a lot of practice tests there that can help you. Now, did, did you also know this? You can also practice listening by going through my integrated writing practice tests. Right? So, and that's good. And then you remember the websites I suggested? I think I said National Public Radio, TED Talks, and also Randall's Cyber Listening Lab. These three particular websites are good. And if you have TV, find the most boring programs ever. Go to Discovery and go to news programs. Try to focus on programs and take notes on programs that you have zero interest in. Right? Because that will be similar to the TOEFL exam. Because you can't fall asleep, Felix, during a lecture during the IBT exam, am I right? Even though it's uninteresting to you, you have to try to pay attention and catch those important points. Alright? So those would be some of my suggestions based on this particular email here. Alright, Felix, thank you for the questions. And remember... Just keep up the good work, keep emailing me, work hard. You will work through all of these problems that you're experiencing right now.